Welcome back. You're watching Startup Central with me, Nantara Rai, working from home. Recently, we saw the government organize a Startup India event called Praram, where we got the, saw the media reticent Kunal Bell talk about the future of uh, not just e-commerce with respect to Snapdeal, but also what all measures we need to see from the government to make the ecosystem more robust. Yes, Kunal Bell. On the point about uh, go-to-market strategy, particularly in competitive domains, what we have noticed is whenever one company starts becoming successful in a particular sector in the you know, tech startup ecosystem, it generally attracts many other players. Now that's not always a bad thing because it does help to uh, more rapidly create the market. Uh, however, you know, there are some things that companies can do to strengthen their market positioning. First and foremost, and likely the most important one, is understanding who your core customer is and how best to serve them. Because we have a billion people in our, more than a billion people in our country, oftentimes uh, as uh, consumer startups, we can, folk, we can say the entire nation of billion people is our, uh, are our customers. But India is very heterogeneous and hence figuring out who amongst those billion people or who all amongst those billion people are your core customers. Because the core customer base forms the kernel of a business and then figuring out how to serve them really well, uh, talking to them, interacting with them frequently, understanding what are their issues with your platform, understanding what are their aspirations in life and how best your company can help them meet those aspirations. Um, and this culture can't only be with the founder or the CEO or the leadership team, it has to percolate across the company where customer insights need to be available across the entire company and not just particular amongst particular people or functions. So first would be understanding the core customer and how best to serve them and how best to serve them better than anyone else uh, in the same market. The second is building a happy ecosystem around the company. It's very hard for a company to be purely self-sufficient. Um, and when I say happy ecosystem, particularly in the case of marketplaces, many tech companies serve the role of connecting the dots between demand and supply. And for instance, a company like Snapdeal, which is very focused on the value segment of the market, where we are catering to consume value conscious consumers in small towns of India, for us, a happy ecosystem means that the sellers on our platform, many of whom are, or most of whom are small, medium-sized businesses, manufacturers, uh, we're making great products, but we also wanna make sure that they are happy selling on our platform to these end consumers. And so that, that ends up playing a very big role. And the third and final thing I would say is, um, you know, while being very insightful about who the customer is and how to serve them is important, having a happy ecosystem around the platform or the business is very important, but the economics of the business are also very important. You know, oftentimes due to the upfront costs associated with building tech businesses uh, with respect to um, you know, R&D, technology, et cetera, uh, initially the economics may be negative. However, it is important to have a path to positive unit economics because that's how the business will sustain and will not only lean on the kindness of strangers to give capital to the business to sustain. So I would say these three things play a very critical role in creating differentiation. Thank you, Gunal. I think that was very good advice that all the stakeholders should participate in the joy of building the new business with happiness. And most importantly, what you said at the end, the unit economics, unit profitability has to be taken into account because as the volumes grow, economies of scale will also improve the profitability. So that's a great suggestion. Uh, also now, uh, in your opinion, what is the way ahead, uh, way ahead for startups to work at global level, which means going beyond their domestic markets? Should cross-country exchange be promoted by governments uh, through their policies, regulations? What is your view on this? Sure, um, I think one of the big tailwinds we are seeing is that uh, you know, obviously India is a is the global leader in IT services, right? Where bespoke IT services, many of those, the leading behemoths in the IT sector, such as Infosys, Wipro, uh, TCS, have also created products and platforms. But India is already known internationally for a great hub for technology products and services. 
Now, uh, but I think that the, as a result of it, the tailwind we are seeing right now is that a lot of uh, young startup founders are creating SaaS-based product companies, which are going international very, very fast. Uh, India will likely create more market cap through SaaS companies that are going global out of India uh, versus any other subsector in the technology start startup space. We are already seeing many unicorns get created in this process. So technology products will go international much faster out of India. Uh, I do uh, feel that the success that many of these companies are seeing when going international from India, where the product is created in India, but sold overseas, the success is mostly being seen in more familiar markets, the US, um, you know, uh, Singapore, Dubai, we are seeing that the markets which are similar to India or easier to sell into or similar to sell into as India, we are seeing more uh, success of uh, these uh, SaaS companies. With respect to the government's role, you know, Israel has a great, uh, is a great model to look towards even for India uh, and other countries where uh, through the Israel uh, Innovation Authority, they assess local enterprises to grow and increase their competitiveness in the global market by establishing strategic connections. Uh, Jetro does that from Japan and the Indian government has some uh, great relationships there. And also through regulatory sandboxes, oftentimes it is pointed out that regulations are not startup friendly. I think what we've seen is a significant development over the last few uh, months, uh, last few quarters and years that governments are now support, the government of India is now supporting building of national capabilities through regulatory sandboxes. Uh, countries like Singapore are doing that for fintech. Recently, the RBI announced the creation of a similar committee and a sandbox for uh, fintech in India. So I do feel that the future looks very, very positive because the government is taking a significant role in uh, promoting techno new technologies that can be exported out of India.